if the American people ever allow private banks to control the issue of their money, the banks and corporations that will grow up around them will deprive the people of their property until their children will wake up homeless. Thomas Jefferson. Following is a timeline demonstrating when and how a private central banking cartel got control of the government, the people, and the assets of the United States. Each fact is supported by official sources. Source documents are available at www.anticorruptionsociety.com under the tab Source Documents. 1913. With the passage of the Federal Reserve Act, a private foreign banking cartel was made the fiscal agent of the United States. Source document, Representative McFadden, Congressional Record, June 1932. From the website of the Federal Reserve Bank of New York, quote, the entry of the United States into World War I added to the responsibilities of the young Federal Reserve Bank. It helped finance U.S. military expenditures by becoming the fiscal agent of the federal government. 1920. Congress handed the U.S. Treasury over to the same private banking cartel via the Independent Treasury Act. Source document, Independent Treasury Act, 1920. 1921. The Council on Foreign Relations was founded to direct the media. Paul Warburg was its first director. Warburg also drafted the Federal Reserve Act and became the Fed's first governor. Paul Warburg was an agent for the Rothschilds banking dynasty. 1925. The United States Corporation Company was chartered in perpetuity in Florida by its fiscal agent. Source document, Articles of Incorporation, United States Corporation Company. This company was created without the approval of Congress, nor the knowledge and authority of the American people. Note, in 1925, the Federal Reserve Bank of New York had offices on Cedar Street and on Broadway, both cited in the Articles of Incorporation. Source document, Articles of Incorporation, United States Corporation Company. The United States Corporation Company created a maximum of 100 shares of stock. Source document, Articles of Incorporation, United States Corporation Company. The Articles of Incorporation revealed the names of three individuals who held only five shares. The other shareholders were not identified. 1920s. The U.S. Treasury was raided by the private Federal Reserve Bank who then caused the Great Depression and bankrupted the United States Corporation Company. Source document, Representative Lewis McFadden. Congressional Record, June 1932. 1933, a state of emergency was claimed and Congress gave the President unconstitutional emergency powers. Source document, Congressional Record, March 1933. On behalf of the private Federal Reserve, President Roosevelt confiscated the people's gold and forced all to use the Federal Reserve notes from then on. Source document, Congressional Record, March 1933. The Federal Reserve is a private corporation. Therefore, their notes are privately owned currency. The people in the property of the United States was hypothecated and placed unlawfully in a public trust. Source document, Representative Trafficant, Congressional Record, March 1993. Hypothecate means to pledge as security without delivery of possession. 1933. The Internal Revenue Service was chartered in Delaware as a private corporation. It is not a division of the U.S. Treasury. Source document, Internal Revenue Service Corporate Charter, 1933. The United States is a private corporation with unnamed stockholders. A private corporation is its fiscal agent. A private corporation owns and circulates the currency we are forced to use. 
a private corporation expects us to pay them taxes. The U.S. CEO, the President, has maintained unconstitutional emergency powers for the past 80 years. Source document Senate Report 93549 and Continuation of the National Emergency 2012-2013. Quote, All United States offices, officials, and departments are now operating within a de facto status in name only under emergency war powers with the constitutional Republican form of government now dissolved. Source document, Representative Trafficant, Congressional Record, March 1993. Today, as has been demonstrated, the United States is just a corporate franchised network represented by their all caps names, such as State of Ohio. Corporate statutes have replaced laws. A corporate statute is a rule of a corporation given the force of law by the consent of the parties. This consent generally requires a signed contract. From Judge Dale, author of The Great American Adventure, page 102, quote, The federal and state governments are not real. They are privately owned corporations called governments, and the law is nothing more than their corporate regulations called statutes, Unquote. As corporations have no souls to save nor bodies to incarcerate, they are just dead legal structures. A dead legal structure cannot represent living people nor obligate living people to laws. Therefore, a corporation cannot be a sovereign government. It can only be a legal structure for commercial contracts, which is all the so-called United States government franchise network is. From Judge Dale's The Great American Adventure, page 10, quote, All of this deception is compounded by the refusal of ordinary Americans to realize, know, or understand that it is this secrecy and duplicity of privately owned corporations being surreptitiously portrayed as American agencies and government that they have come together to fleece the American people. For more information, read Judge Dale's The Great American Adventure, free online at anticorruptionsociety.com.